The priority is really to increase access to effective treatment generally, and we're looking at it in three ways. We're looking at where most people are in primary care, where we think there should be screening and some treatment. We're looking at the whole issue of measuring progress or lack of progress, which of course, when you do that, you make treatment um, more based on the evidence and effective treatment increases. And the third is really um, what we've come to know has been one of the few silver linings in the pandemic is that people are very comfortable using technology to receive treatment and to interact with practitioners. And so we address that as well. There is an old political saying, right? Uh, crisis is opportunity. During a crisis, you have time and, and the opportunity to get really a groundswell um, to make changes that we've known for a long time we need to make. is short-term and long-term success, right? We've aligned the levers, um, which are often financial, to really create urgency around screening and treatment in primary care, around the permanent use of technology to increase access, and that we change practice so that we have clear standards and that we're measuring progress or lack of progress. a great believer in having a big vision, but understanding that progress is incremental. And so one of the things we need to do is have perseverance. And so progress won't happen overnight, um, but it will happen every day in small ways. What are the associations and the companies doing telehealth, including telepsychiatry? What are the companies that have instruments which measure um, automatically through your electronic health records, standardized instruments that measure progress or lack thereof? We need to look at those groups and use their power. So I think when we recognize that mental illnesses and addictions touch us all, whether we're employers, family, friends, ourselves, then it's natural to think this is everybody's business. I think they will add to the progress we're making in ensuring that every American can get effective care, knows where to go, um, knows how to pay for it, um, and, and um, it's paid for in an equitable way with all other physical disorders. So for the person who's feeling anxious or stressed, they bring it up to their general practitioner or their internist. And so what we see is that general practitioner or internist writing a script. What we're talking about is much more uniform screening, using instruments, and then having consultation from a trained psychiatrist. It's called the collaborative care model. And on site, having a care manager who's been trained. Team approach in primary care. say when I go home tonight, there'll be a package of Amazon boxes at my door. Um, I've gotten to the point now where I order things. I mean, there is nothing I don't order and have delivered. And now all the stores have caught up with that. They'll give you next day delivery as well. They won't charge for shipping. So why would we think that health services will be different? I haven't seen a teller in a bank in years, right? Um, I don't even go to ATMs anymore. Every Everything is transacted online. The national response myth has to make sure that some of what we come out with, the policies we endorse, 
will be that everyone who needs it has broadband access, has tablets and, and computers, and that they have enough minutes um, on their phones to communicate via phone. And so I, I think very much um, that's what's happening to healthcare. And tele mental health is no different.